Problem one says, the question involves reasoning about a simulation of a frog hopping in a straight line. The frog attempts to hop to a goal with a specified number of hops. The simulation is encapsulated in the following frog simulation class, and we'll write two of these methods. We're going to end up writing the simulate method here, and we're going to be writing the run simulations method here. So let's talk about what's happening here. Uh, for the simulation method, we're going to be starting at a position of zero with a maximum number of hops. We want to return true if we reach our goal within the maximum number of hops. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So if we exceed our goal, then we're good. Uh, it's just that if we uh, end up falling short of our goal, then of course we're going to return false. Uh, we have a method called hop distance that we're going to call repeatedly. And as we call it repeatedly, we're going to be getting different values out of it. It's going to be the number of, or the distance that we hop each iteration. Um, a positive distance moves towards the goal, a negative distance moves away from the goal. Uh, the distance varies from call to call. Each time the frog hops, its position is adjusted by that value. And we are going to keep going until three things happen. So one, the frog has reached or passed its goal, two, the frog has reached the negative position, or three, the frog has taken the maximum number of hops without reaching the goal. So in other words, we're going to keep going unless one of these three things happens, and we should get a true or a false when this is completed. Uh, the following example shows a declaration of a frog simulation object for which the goal distance is 24 inches and the maximum number of hops is five. So here, notice I've got 5, add 7 makes 12, take away 2 makes 10, 10 and 8 is 18, 18 and 6 is 24. We reach our goal, we return true. Here we have 6, plus 7 is 13, plus 6 is 21, uh, plus 6 is 19, plus 6 is 25, which gives us true. Here we've got 6, take away 6 is 0, plus 31 is 31, which is also true. Here we get 4, then 2, then a minus 8. As soon as we hit this minus 8, notice our total went from a 4 to a 6 to a negative 2, so we stop hopping and we return false. Here, the maximum number of hops we get is 5, so 5 and 4 is 9, and 2 is 11, and 4 is 15, and 3 is 18. We don't reach our target of 24 within time, we return false. So we are going to keep going as long as uh, we're not negative, we still have hops to do, and we haven't reached our goal. And as soon as any of these things happen, we're going to return true or false. All right, so let's talk about what's happening here. Uh, first thing is I have to return a value at the end. I'm going to have to be returning something of type Boolean. So I'm going to start by keeping track of my position. My frog is going to be starting at position zero, and we're going to be adding or subtracting to it based on this uh, condition. And then we're going to go up to our maximum number of hops. So I'm going to set up a loop, a for loop, int hop gets zero. Uh, hop is going to be less than the max hops, which is the constant we have. Hops plus plus. And inside this loop, we're going to have to check a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get hop distance and add that to position. So I'm going to say that pause is going to get pause plus hop distance. And remember, the things that are going to stop us is, one, have we reached the maximum number of hops? If we haven't, we're going to continue in the loop. Two if we've reached our target, so if my position is greater than or equal to uh, hop distance, uh, not hop distance, uh, the goal distance, if that's true, then I want to return true. Because I've reached the goal, I'm good. If position is less than zero, then we've gone negative. Remember, that's the thing that actually can stop things as well, so we return false. But if neither of these things happen, then we're going to keep going until we've done all of our maximum hops. Now, if we reach this point, if we've exited our for loop, then we haven't reached our goal distance, 
So we're going to return false at this point. And that's the end of our method. So notice what's happening here. I'm starting my count at zero, and I'm going to keep going until I've reached my goal distance, and that's a good situation. Or I go backwards, I end up with a negative position, and that's a bad situation. Or I've reached the maximum number of hops. If I reach the maximum number of hops, that means I haven't reached my goal, and that's a bad outcome, which is why I'm returning false here. So that's what I'm looking at for part A. On part B, it says write the run simulations method, which performs a given number of simulations and returns the proportion of simulations for which the frog successfully reached or passed the goal. For example, if the parameter past the run simulations is 400, and 100 of these 400 simulate method calls return true, then run simulations method should return 0 0.25. So in other words, we should be getting a double out of this. Uh, complete run simulations below. Assume that simulate works as specified regardless of what you wrote in part A. Remember that simulate is going to return true or false depending on whether or not we made it. So I'm going to have to make sure that I go through this a certain number of times, num number of times, and I'm going to start off by declaring a double called successes, and I'm going to start that at zero. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to run uh, for each of these things. So int uh, run is zero, run is less than num, run plus plus. This is keeping track of how many of these runs I've done. This is the number of simulations that I've run so far. And then if uh, simulate Keep in mind that simulate is a Boolean function. It's going to return either a true or false. If I get a true out of it, then I want to successes plus plus. In other words, I've got a good true out of it. I want to add to my successes. If I don't get a good out of this, then I don't want to change the number of successes. It's just going to be a failed run, and I'm just going to increment my run counter. And then at the end, I want to return that fraction. Remember, I need to return 100 out of 400 to get that 0.25. So I want to return successes divided by num, because num is the number of simulations that I'm trying to run here. Here I'm really doing 100 divided by 400. And because this is a double, that ensures that my answer is going to be a decimal, 0.25. So we're good. So that's part B, and that completes problem one.